Why don't you tone down, Khalid? Attorney Alton Maddox, the warrior lawyer, Dr. John Henry Clark, Reverend Dr. Shaka Musa Barashango. They touch me with what they say. I can't tone down. I tried to tone down. God didn't make me to tone down. I can't tone down. I can't bow down. I can't sit down. I can't give up. I can't shut up. God damn it, I must stand up and deal with this. Deal with this. Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam claim they are moving toward moderation and increased tolerance. You decide. Minister okay. Farrakhan spoke in Washington this afternoon. Recent events surrounding the remarks by one of my ministers is causing intense concern among many people. Brother Khalid Abdul Muhammad spoke at King College at the invitation of the students. The students chose his subject for him. During the speech, Brother Khaled made remarks that were not consistent with the proper representation of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, his teachings and guidance, myself, and the Nation of Islam. I found the speech after listening to it in context vile in manner, repugnant, malicious, mean-spirited, and spoken in mockery of individuals and people, which is against the spirit of Islam. While I stand by the truths that he spoke, I must condemn in the strongest terms the manner in which those truths were represented. I therefore have dismissed Brother Khaled from his post as Minister, Representative, and National Assistant until he demonstrates that he is willing to conform to the manner of representing Allah, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, his truth, his guidance, the aim and his purpose for us in America in a manner that would be pleasing to Allah, his messenger, myself, and the nation. Now those are words I will remember forever. Vile in manner, malicious, repugnant, mean-spirited, spoken in mockery of people and individuals and not in the spirit of Islam. They said, how could this be happening? I couldn't believe it happened. Then the centerfold of the Final Call newspaper came out with a transcript of the full press conference. I was hurt. I can't lie to you. I was hurt. And then Muslims started backing away from me. <clears throat> so even through this situation, Dr. Khaled was completely loyal to Minister Farrakhan. And Minister, Minister Farrakhan said that he had no problems with Dr. Khaled. Although after a while, it would seem evident that not only was Dr. Khaled suspended from the nation, but he was ousted. And basically kicked out of the nation of Islam. Um, as Khaled has said, he tried to reach out to the minister for years. And he only was able to speak to him a few times to get one meeting in which he was supposedly going to be reinstated. Um, but that never happened. Um, he had kind of like a pseudo reinstatement and he didn't get his positions back or his post back. And he didn't get the same respect or protection that he should have been getting. So he went ahead and just basically just as Malcolm X did say, I guess they don't want me. And then he left. Things were heating up between Khaled and Farrakhan with Khaled being ousted from the nation and continuous contradictions of ideology between the two, a showdown was bound to happen. 
Khaled had vowed to not challenge Farrakhan even after his dismissal from the NOI, and he had kept his promise thus far. But it seems Farrakhan's unfair criticism of the Million Youth March would be that straw that broke the camel's back. And Khaled finally decided to confront the minister publicly, and fireworks would follow. Khaled was elected as the national chairman at a recent National Panther Summit in the fall of 1998, and Aaron Michaels was elected the national minister of defense of the new Black Panther Party. Khaled will respond to Farrakhan's comments on the Million Youth March at the United African Movement New York Forum a few weeks later in a public forum titled No Holds Bar. Tonight, brothers and sisters, No Holds Bar, set up by the United African Movement. Making he said, what do I feel about the Day of Atonement speech by Minister Louis Farrakhan, in my judgment, at points? He said very strong and powerful things. At other points, he appeared to be defending Bill Clinton. I'm not going into the definition of sexual intercourse, but if you consult your dictionary, that which is other than coitus could be termed foreplay. Did you touch? Did you feel? So in the definition given by Judge Weber, right, and in his own mind, since he did not enter this woman, he could use that as part of the fig leaf. I listen. want you to listen to me. I'm going to say Look this again. I, I did, did not, not have sexual, sexual relations, relations with, with that woman. Miss Lewinsky. He would spank him on one hand and defend him on the other hand. I, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm a defender of truth. He went on to give the impression that if Clinton would listen to him, adhere to him as the modern day Jonah, that America could repent. But I'm here to say to you, and I say to my spiritual father, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, oh my dear father, there is no repentance for America. There is no atonement for America. We have been burned at the stake. We have been burned alive. He has robbed us of our names, our language, our religion, our culture, our folkways, our God, our mores. Robbed us of the very power of our own being. The karma that is on America and the white man cannot be lifted. Double unto her what she has given. Another scripture says, as thou hast done, so shall it be done unto you. In Exodus 21 and 16, he that stealeth a man and selleth that man, and if he be caught with that man in his hands, he shall surely be put to death. The white man admits he stole us. Oh, there is no repentance for America. There is no atonement for America. It says in Emphatically, no, oh dear father, have you forgotten the lesson? The lessons say emphatically, no. Says all of the prophets have tried and none of them were successful. Who do you think you are? That God has come to destroy this goddamn bastard and you will get in the way to try to save this bastard? Hell no. My dear father, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, when I was blind, deaf, and dumb, you came after me and lifted me up from the graveyard of the white man's ignorance. And as it appears that you have deviated from the path of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as your little son, as your little student, I don't want any harm to come to you, but it is my divine duty to come after you with the truth of Elijah Muhammad as you came after me. I didn't know some of the things that Brother Khalid was saying about me. I instructed all the ministers, you know, to leave Brother Khalid alone. I didn't want anybody from a speaker's stand condemning him. I didn't want anybody 
bothering him, leave him alone. Over a year and a half or so ago, they played a tape of Brother Khaled, and I listened to it. He was condemning me. Must the student now teach the teacher? And I bore witness to the truth that he spoke, and then when he went in a certain direction, I said, oh, my poor brother. I really can see how the messenger was pained. My son went home and found the tape that night, and he played it, and Brother Khaled had gone all the way out. What I believe our dear brother asked had to do with Attorney Malik Zulu Shabazz, the National Youth Director, being verbally disciplined publicly by Minister Farrakhan. How do I feel about that? I didn't like it. I thought he should never have done that. And then to stand up and beat on him and embarrass him in front of everyone during the time that he's running for public office, to bring him up in front of everybody and try to embarrass him. And he called me. He sounded so hurt on the phone when he called me because he too, as I, he loves Minister Farrakhan. He looks up to Minister Farrakhan and he was very hurt that Minister Farrakhan talked kind of down about the Million Youth March, how he started the Million Man March. Nobody didn't check with him. Come on, dear father. You're the one that taught me about arrogance, ego, pure motives. He went on to say with Brother Malik standing there that if your heart is not right in words or if your motives are not pure, then you won't be successful. What are you saying, Minister Farrakhan? Are you the only one with pure motives? Nobody else has pure motives except you? No, sir. I must respectfully disagree with you. There are many of us who have pure motives. I was the first to call the million. We all love you for that. And if you heard the tapes, saw Brother Clemson Brown's video or any of the others, or if you were there, you know we gave props to Minister Farrakhan from the beginning to the end. We invited him. You may not know this, but when he was trying to organize the youth, I sent him a letter to guide him so that he would be successful. Why? I'm trying to see what force is driving you, brother. What drummer is inside your head that you refuse to listen to the one that God has authorized. I didn't expect him to come, and I'm nobody's puppy dog. I'm not gonna tuck my tail and go sniffing behind. Nobody, Louis Farrakhan, didn't teach me that way. And it hurt me to hear some of the things that it is reported that he was saying. He did not understand my moves, and therefore, rather than question, he became a critic. And I guess he wanted me to come after him and bring him home. But since I did not send him out, I was not going after I was waiting for God to help him to see the error of his way. And if he started to make a step toward me, I would make two toward him. I got one letter from Minister Farrakhan in five years. One letter in five years, though I had written him. I called him repeatedly. You've heard me talk about it right at the UAM forum. For years, he set up meetings and postponed the meeting. When I was in the hospital, shot down like a dog. He never visited me, never sent me a letter, never sent me a postcard. Not a penny, not a nickel, not a dime the whole damn time. I know what happened between Malcolm and the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and how Malcolm's letters were being intercepted, how his calls were being intercepted. So I know when to reach my father so I would call him early in the morning when I knew he would answer the phone and I would sometimes speak directly to him and he would be just as nice and promise that we would meet and there were no meeting. I stopped doing that and I said everywhere he was going to speak, I would go and sit on the front row or the second row to say, here I am. Will you see me? Can we talk? Can we work this out? I'm, I want to come back. Remember how dedicated I've been? 
Remember how committed I've been, how devoted I've been. Remember, I was with you when your son was not with you. I was with you when your daughters were not with you. I was with you when none of the nation of Islam was with you. Remember me. I'm the one who used to pack two pistols to make sure that nobody would do anything to you. I'm the one who would stand next to you with a gun and a Bible. I'm the one who was willing to take a bullet for you. If an enemy stood up to shoot you down, I would sit on the front row, the second row, begging almost, pleading. What in the hell do I look like five years later calling a man saying we're having the Million Youth March? Will you come and help us, please, sir? We still invited him because it was the right thing to do. But we don't have to consult you. We consult God and God alone, God damn it. I ask you to vote. Do you think that I think that this system is going to give us what we want? You heard my father, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, say clear out. We want separation. You haven't heard me say it. I say it in a different kind of way. Those of you who were with me when I joined Reverend Jackson, I said I'm with you. To make this man president. Excuse me. Khaled had guns. He had organization. He had protection. He had the youth behind him. And he was ready to stand up to whomever, even Minister Farrakhan. And so he responded and, 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 and fireworks followed. Um, he basically accused the minister of abandoning the mm -hmm. teachings. And said, it was his duty to teach the minister now and bring him back under the teachings of the Elijah Muhammad, which of course put a wedge in between them that would never be um, able to put back together because you really can't be accused of anything more serious. But he's no threat to the white man. You're no threat when you go over and over and over again on the same dead end, unproductive things that we've done in the 60s. You're going to vote. You're going to pick it. You're going to boycott. Somebody has to speak to you strongly today because you're falling back into that old integration. Give me, let me have. Can you spare? I'm going to pick it. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do everything in every way to get with you, white man. Now I'm going to include you in my religious meetings. When I have big rallies, everybody can come. You know damn well who I'm talking to. And you know what I'm talking about. The white man is all right now. Oh, damn it, he ate the devil on Monday and he ate the devil on Tuesday. The Lord Elijah Muhammad. The Lord Elijah Muhammad said. The Lord Elijah Muhammad said. We shouldn't have no guns. Well, the Lord Elijah Muhammad didn't tell you to vote either. But if you find a way to vote, he said he didn't know the one good politician. That was Adam Clayton Powell. Adam Clayton Powell been dead 30 years. You can't be going to vote for him. Then you want to bring Master Barad Muhammad in to cover your dirty religion. How are you going to treat Master Barad Muhammad's white mother? Are you going to disrespect her? No. I wouldn't disrespect Master Farad Muhammad's mother. But listen to me. I can't give Master Farad Muhammad's mother no more respect than he gave to her. It was Master Farad Muhammad who came and told us and taught us that the white man is the devil. That none of them were any good. No, not one. That you are special people. You are chosen people. I don't want you mixed up with white people. If Master Farad Muhammad didn't make no provisions for his mama, I can't make none for her. Stop trying to use Master Farad Muhammad to shield your dirty religion. You teach me all my life that the white man is the devil? You teach me my whole life that the white man is the devil? Now you tell me it's all right for him to come among us. People lost their minds over the sea. People went to insane asylum doors. People all but committed suicide when Wallace Muhammad came and tried to change the teaching.
these other fathers. Now you gonna work some slick way to include the devil? Hell no, I will never go. Hell no, I will never go. I will never go. You tell them to stop calling the white man the devil. A whole generation has grown up that did not know that the white man was. Another generation has gone to sleep that used to know that the white man was. And all, and basically, he explained also how they literally cut him off and won't have nothing to do with him. You see what I'm saying? Because the white man say you got to get rid of college if you want to get co 